There's a large number of African Americans in the community that have had a family history of stroke. That puts them at an increased risk. The question is, is that uh, really lifestyle choices relationship or is it more genetics? It's a really combination of the two. With African Americans having high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, those are what's also causing their increased risk for having stroke. There's also living in the southeast, living in Birmingham and living in the area, African Americans have an increased risk of not only stroke but also dying from the stroke. We have an acronym that we use ACT FAST, an F-A-S-T, face, arm, speech, and time. If somebody has uh, facial weakness, you ask them to smile, one side of their face is weak, uh, that could be signs of a stroke. If you ask them to raise both their arms, and one arm is weaker than the other, that could be signs of a stroke. Ask them to repeat a sentence for you, and if they have slurred speech or the difficulty getting their words out, that could all be signs of a stroke, and the T's for time. It's, we only have an, one acute treatment that we can use in the first three hours of stroke. The problem with stroke is that it doesn't hurt, like a heart attack. It's the same process of lack of blood flow to the heart causes chest pain, and people show up at the emergency room within 15 minutes. With a stroke, it's lack of blood flow to one specific area, but it doesn't hurt. It causes these signs of weakness, slurred speech, um, and those don't really, you try to rationalize them out and you don't show up to the ER. Um, so really the most important thing is if you recognize any of those symptoms in yourself or in others, is to call 911 immediately. Some things that we can do to help prevent stroke is treating the risk factors. High blood pressure, diet, uh, inactivity, uh, obesity, um, and diabetes. So helping control those risk factors is all gonna help reduce your risk of stroke. The main way to do that is to form a partnership with your physician. Um, if your blood pressure is high, it's in the follow-up appointments in six months. If your blood pressure remains high throughout the six months, we haven't really helped lower your risk of stroke. We've given you one pill, but you haven't really reduced your risk. Uh, forming that partnership with not only your physician, but with your family members and your community to know what the signs of stroke are, what other risk factors are, and help prevent just as a family and a community is the best way to do that. With diet and exercise, that's the major treatment to try to help reduce the risk of stroke, including exercise, including the uh, wide variety of vegetables into your diet, and lowering the amount of fried food intake is all gonna help lower your risk of stroke. I can't look at you and say, oh, you're gonna have a, a stroke in the next 10 minutes or in the next 10 years. Uh, it's more of trying to understand the risk factors and the signs. The major signs for an early stroke is called a TIA, or a transient ischemic attack. If you have a TIA, you're at increased risk of having a stroke within the next seven to 10 days. And the TIA is basically a mini stroke. You have the same symptoms, but they go away within the hour or within 24 hours. But when those symptoms start, you don't know if they're gonna go away. So we ask people to immediately, again, call 911, get to the hospital. The Magic City Stroke Prevention Project will, um, they go out and give resources for stroke in the community. So at health fairs, at uh, different functions that go on at churches, community groups, health centers, trying to get the word out on awareness of stroke and uh, different ways to prevent stroke in the community. Uh, the website is uh, www.magiccitystroke.com. It's all one word. You're going to find information about what the risk factors of stroke are, the ways to help prevent stroke as far as with diet, exercise, but then also information to, for you to use with your physician on help lowering your risk with high blood pressure and diabetes. So it's not just getting the word out and awareness, but ways to, that you can partner with your physician and partner with your community on lowering your overall risk.